hello ladies and gentlemen as discussed uh, in the part of asset management today we are discussing the module one so let me share my screen this is the module one which we are going to discuss today which is introduction to asset management okay all these things we will discuss one by one so let's go to the slide we start with the very first topic that is what is asset management or you can say it asset management so it is basically a structured way for companies to track and manage their technology related assets. So this technology term is very important. So all the assets which are technology driven, either used by technology, run by technology, all these assets are tracked, okay, and managed by using asset management. There are many questions which we are going to discuss going forward, okay. So these assets can be anything that company buys. It means company bought it owns or leases okay it could be a laptop server mobile phone software license or even the networking equipment so you see all these are technology related things so whatever it asset management is doing it is keeping track and managing these it assets so company need to know so why the company want to do this okay what is the curiosity and what are the reasons company want to do asset management so you see here they want to know what assets they have. They want to keep track of the number of assets or type of assets they are having. They just wanted to know, have a complete policy setted list, okay? Where those assets are located, the location of the asset, who is using these assets, whether these assets are being used properly or lying unused, okay? Or when these assets are need to be repaired, renewed and replaced. So all these are the questions, all these are the things which the company wanted to know, but why? So answer is here. So what is the purpose of IT asset management? To save the cost by avoiding unnecessary purchase because you know, a company is ultimately using these devices. So these devices are used to do the business, right? So company has to purchase it. Company has to look into it because it's not one or two devices. It's a lakhs of devices, which involves huge cost. So in order to optimize the cost properly, the company is looking forward with all the proper details about that device or about that asset, okay? Ensure assets are being properly maintained because the business is ultimately depending on these devices, right? That's why company want these assets should work properly and properly maintained. They should not waste time in arranging the devices, okay? In not updating, let's say you are working on a particular uh, application and that application is dependent on a server okay if that server goes down so that your application goes down so number of time the servers goes down it means that time you are out of business it means it is a huge loss which the company is bearing that's why these assets need to be maintained properly improve security by tracking who is using it obviously there may be concern of security so that's why uh, they want their devices to be properly secure so that the person who is authorized is, is only using it. Otherwise, in case it is not properly secured, it may be possible some kind of hacking or some kind of breaches may happen and that will de definitely uh, dent uh, the process, the company or the procedures of that company, okay? So that's why providing secure and you know uh, compliant devices is very important. Stay compliant, next point. Stay compliant with the software license rules. So obviously, we are using n number of softwares in our companies, right? Static from Windows, uh, PDFs and all these things, okay? So if the license are not properly maintained, the next vendor can sue us, the next vendor uh, stop servicing, stop providing the services to us. So all these things are needed in an IT asset management and this is the main purpose of IT asset management. Let's move to the next point. IT asset management in ServiceNow. So in ServiceNow, IT asset management is a powerful application that help organize track their IT asset throughout their entire life cycle. So when we have an asset, we have a life cycle associated with it. What is that life cycle? We will see in next slides. But in order to maintain these life cycles, in order to maintain these assets, ServiceNow is providing a proper IT asset management application. And that IT asset management application is built keeping all the real time things in mind so that company needs minimum customization and maximum usage of that application. 
all the features available in that application are professional features which are based on certain experiences which are provided by their customers or by their surveys or based on their huge experience i mean service now huge experience okay so to manage their entire life cycle from request to disposal okay so that's why we are using this service now it is asset management application it connects with other service now modules like procurement discovery cmdb to provide full picture of all the assets in the company so obviously when we have assets and when we have lots and lots of assets we need certain processes like how these uh, what is the process of purchasing these uh, assets what is the process of discovering these assets so where these assets are there so that people can easily see that okay so all these things are available in service now with different different application so it asset management had good integration with all these applications so that you have a complete picture without much trouble without much issues okay so here we have some example let's say a company buys 100 laptops or let's say 1000 laptops for their employees okay with it asset management in service now they can track where each laptop is located yes they should know or it may be a client requirement so that they came to know that there is no breach okay the location should always be available so for that they can track know who is using it it means who is the user of that particular laptop monitor warranty to lease information plan for replacement when needed so all these things are there which are needed whenever a company purchase such type of laptops okay so that's why we need in a nutshell it asset management application or it asset manager process in a particular application in a particular company now let's move to the topic two which is asset versus configuration item this is a very important thing you must understand what is the difference between a ci and an asset it is asked in various interviews and people may get confused okay so please listen carefully what is an asset an asset mainly refers to the financial and ownership part of an item okay it's all about purchasing details cost vendor invoice ownership warranty and depreciation and tracking it using uh, uh, throughout the life or buying to disposal means its life cycle so let's take an example a company buys a laptop last example for an employee that laptop becomes an asset for a company because it has a financial value and needs to be tracked for accounting okay now let's move to the next definition so that you will be able to understand the difference properly so a ci which is configuration item refers to the technical and operational aspect of the same item okay so if we talk about the same laptop what all technical and operational information that laptop is having will be counted or you know listed into the ci and what type of information that could be it could be an item's role in the it operation relationship with other system or devices uh, current status of that particular device whether that laptop is right now uh, active not active on powered off powered on okay so here i'm talking about a laptop but uh, there are various other devices like servers network devices all these things which we already discussed previously could be a part of this asset versus ci thing okay so the same laptop also connect to the company's network and system so it's also a ci because it need to know its operational details like ip address installed devices install software or user issues so now let me give you the example here we are talking about the same laptop but the same laptop is being considered as an asset as well as as an a ci but it is holding different values in an asset we are focused on you know purchasing things finance related thing okay whereas in case of configuration item that is ci we are focusing on operational related thing configuration related things so the same thing is being used differently and it is called an asset as well as ci i hope it is clear to you now so this is again a, a particular table just to be more clear what is the focus focus of asset management is financial and ownership whereas a ci is focusing on technical and operational things and it is used by again asset is being used by financial 
and department procurement and IT asset management teams, whereas a CI is more involved in IT operation or support teams. Whenever we are creating some kind of incident, problem or change, in that we have to mention this particular CI is being used or this particular CI is down so that the support team will now engage and take uh, corrective actions. Then what is the purpose? Uh, asset purpose is tracking cost, warranty and ownership, whereas a CI purpose is track operational status and issues. Examples, I already told you, purchase price, vendor, owner, whereas in configuration item, what uh, things we are monitoring, IP address, status and dependencies. So in simple words, asset is how much did it cost, who owns it, whereas a CI for the same item is what does it do in our IT system, is it working properly or not. So this is as simple as I can give you. I hope you got it. Let's move to the next topic, which is topic three. I told you we will discuss about life cycle of an asset. Okay, so what is a life cycle? Uh, asset life cycle is basically the journey an asset goes through from its time it is requested or purchased till all the way it gets disposed. Okay, so in service now, there is a proper process which they have defined keeping uh, various vendors, keeping various, uh, you know, uh, real time things in mind. But it is possible that in your company, this process could be a, a bit different. So, no need to worry about it. You have to, according to your company, here I am talking general sense, which is out of box provided by ServiceNow. So the life cycle of an asset started from here. First of all, it is requested. So who requested it? Uh, someone from the company is requesting it. Then it is again ordered by the procurement team. Then once it is ordered, then it is received. Then it is maintained, returned, retired and disposed. Okay, this is the complete simple life cycle of a particular asset. Okay, so now let's discuss something about uh, these steps. First one is request. So as I mentioned, an employee or department request a new asset like laptop server through the service catalog. You know what is a service catalog? It is a kind of menu card of a company, the services which a company is providing. Okay. So the employee or their boss or someone from that team can go and uh, create a request there. And based on that, we have a kind of a PO purchasing order will be available. Okay. Then we have order the procurement team review the request okay and it has to be approved and finally places the order with the vendor obviously you cannot uh, uh, request anything by your own right it must be approved there is a certain process or a workflow which has to be followed so that's why in this order step we have approval so once this uh, so once it is approved it is now requested to the vendor after that after some time the asset arrives okay it will be checked by the IT team or whoever team is available. Okay, asset record are now created in service now with the details of model, serial number and vendor. Okay, so what we do? So once these assets are arrived, their details will be properly created. Their record will be properly created in service now asset management. So that's what the IT asset management of service now is available. Okay, it can be manual. It can be, you know, via some integration, whatever process your company is following. But the record must be created and it has more of these values to be filled in so that we monitor it properly. After that, we have deploy phase. Okay, once the order is received, when the asset is received, it will it is checked. It is now in the system. Okay, now it's time to deploy it or it's not, now it's time to give it to the user. Okay, so in this case, the asset is assigned to a user or department. It is ready for use and tracking begins from the warranty and tracking begins for warranty usage and performance. Okay, so all these things from that day is started here because it is ready to use. Then we have the fifth point where it is maintained properly. The asset may need repair or upgrade during its usage. Yes, it is possible in case of service now also. You see, we are upgrading service now twice a year, right? So like this. In hardware also, we have these assets which can be upgraded or repaired if it has any issues. Okay, whatever is being done in the system, all these things, all these details will be monitored or logged. Okay, so that we have a complete history of that particular maintenance, upgrade, everything. And all these things are needed later. 
so that we can create so that we can have all the information about that asset whenever any kind of decision is pending in order to retire it in order to purchase new system etc then we have the sixth point which is return or transfer if the asset is no longer needed by user it can be returned to the stock room or reassigned to someone else so like it happens to you as well whenever you leave a company you have to deposit your assets then these assets, if are in good condition, will be reassigned, okay? So after, because they are in their warranty period, then we have to retire it. So once the asset reaches its end of life, okay, it is outdated. In that case, it is retired from the service and then finally it got disposed. So this is the simple life cycle of an asset. I hope uh, you got it, okay? So this is a simple example. You can pause the video and you can look into this example. Very simple. I am keeping these things very simple. Why? Because I want you to have complete understanding of the process. Going forward, when we move to new modules, uh, we will discuss it uh, with more complex examples. So now next is tracking. This entire life cycle ensures why we are doing tracking because we want assets are used efficiently. No hidden or missing assets. Okay financial accountability is there and better planning for the future purchases because i told you the business has to do certain cost things business has to take decisions whether to buy new assets so because of all these details because of all these asset management reports the company or the leadership will be able to take further actions so this is it for today's video in the module one I will complete the rest of the topics in the module one in the next video, which is topic four, overview of service and asset management. And there is one more left, which is topic five, difference between hardware asset management and software asset management in service now. Okay, so we'll discuss these things in our next video. Till then, subscribe to the channel and let me know what are your thoughts and doubts. Thank you. Bye-bye.